Hi guys, this is the tale of how we had our BMW stolen, how I went to go on to find it and get it recovered by the police. So the story starts back in January 2018. We didn't really have that much money at the time. My girlfriend was driving my 400 pound Honda to work every day. And um, she got quite a good job, so she was a little bit embarrassed about driving this old banger Honda. I love a banger, I love a 400 pound Honda but for her, it was getting a little bit much. So we didn't have much money, but I just recently closed out a ISA, an investment ISA, which had a few ETFs in there that really weren't going anywhere. So I lost a little bit of money on those ETFs, but I withdrew the money out and had about 2,000 pounds back from that. That was pretty much all my savings at that point in time. I wanted to do something nice for her, and I knew she liked BMW Z4s. She'd had a, an E85 Z4. Um, just a few years prior, which she then sold to get a more practical car, a four-door car, a car with more space and carry more people. So I knew she really liked the Z4. We were keeping the Honda at that time. And I thought, you know what, I'll go out and I'll find just a Z4. Two grand at that time, even now, um, wouldn't really find you the best Z4. But I managed to find one with somewhat high miles. It's about 137,000 miles on the clock. Now I've had like six in the petrol BMWs from over the years, 5 Series, E28 5 Series, E33 Series. I know these straight six petrol BMWs will just go on forever. So I wasn't really worried about the relatively high miles. And I knew my girlfriend would be doing quite a lot of miles on it. She was doing like 500 miles a week just with work anyway. So there's no point in getting a real mint. I couldn't afford a real mint low miler anyway. But high mile was fine for her because she was going to really rack up the miles on it. So me and my son, we really surprised her. We got the Z4 back. She didn't know it was coming. We put a, a, a ribbon across the bonnet and uh, and we surprised her. And she was completely overwhelmed. She thought, you know, such a nice thing to do. I'd only known her for about a year at this time. And it was like the biggest gesture <clears throat> I'd done for her at that point. So she was really overwhelmed and she loved it. And the car really was nice. It drove really nice, top down in the summertime. Z4, I, I like convertibles. Um, Z4 is quite quite a fun little car, especially for her to be you know, driving around, and just enjoying the car and everything was going great for nearly two years. And then September, September I can't remember when, when this happened, but it was either September or October uh, 2019. Now my girlfriend is a very sociable person, person, she loves to chat. So on this particular day, she was driving my car. At that time, I had a Land Rover Freelander. She was down at the allotment and the uh, Freeland is just a much more suitable car down the allotment. It's quite muddy, it's quite bumpy. Z4 doesn't really like that. So she would take the Z4 down there, you know, loads of space in the boot, whack loads of chicken pellets in there and whatever we need down the allotment. So she took the practical Freelander at that point. Um, so she, <laughs> she's chatting away with someone down the allotment and uh, two hoodies managed to, we later saw on CCTV that they, they were riding past on bicycles, um, they one of them got off the bike, uh, like snuck into the Z4 while she was just literally meters away talking to someone, uh, stole a handbag and went through the glove box and nicked a few other items of, that didn't really have any value. Uh, but the most important things they stole were the, the keys to the Z4. Uh, my girlfriend also had a passport in there because she was doing like some ID checks. You know, we do ID checks, you need like a passport and a utility bill. And the utility bill was a real worry for us because we had a spare key to the Z4, so it wasn't really a problem in, in driving the car, but we were just really worried that we weren't too sure if or if not that utility or bank statement um, was in her handbag. So as a precautionary measure, we changed the locks to the house. We thought, well, we definitely don't want to get robbed, right? We don't, we don't want any thieves coming into our house. Um, that would just be like a complete disaster, worst case thing that could happen. Um, I looked into the possibility of changing all the locks on the Z4. Um, obviously, BMW is not even really worth talking to them. BMW main dealer would just charge an outrageous fee uh, for changing all the locks. I looked into eBay ways of doing it, trying to find like a crash damage Z4. But I weighed it up in my head that for a £2,000 car, the amount of money and time and effort that would go into changing all the door locks and ignition barrel and the various electrics that would need to be messed around with to make that all work, it wasn't going to be worth it. So we took the risk, in hindsight, is obviously going be a foolish risk, but we took the risk that we were going to change the locks on the house and leave the Z4 and just hope those criminals didn't find out where we lived. In hindsight, that was an error. 
uh, at the time I would drive more daily than she would so she would generally put the Z4 in first we have a like a driveway one car in front of the other Z4 going first and I would put the Freelander and after a while I changed the Freelander to the Rover 75 on the night the car was stolen I had my Rover 75 and rather than my 75 boxing the Z4 in for some reason I think she'd been working late or she worked on a different shift the Z4 was 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 the first car out and this was the night that the thieves came and stole the car so this is the exact position where the Z4 was stolen from normally the Z4 would have been parked there and at the time we had the Rover 75 and we used that to box it in but night in question Rover 75 was here, Z4 was here, we woke up in the morning and the car was gone. So a handbag had been stolen in September, October 2019 and it wasn't until December, it wasn't until a few months later that the criminals managed to find the car. It, turned, it transpires later that the police let us know when they finally caught up with the thieves that the thieves primarily primarily weren't into stealing cars <clears throat> they were primarily um, house burglars so in hindsight it was really good fortune that we had changed the locks on the house um, we don't know if they ever attempted um, to break into the house um, we can't know that for sure but the police later said um, when they were interviewing them that they were round the corner um, robbing a house and one had said to the other have you still got the key to that Z4 because it's parked it's just parked around the corner and that was the night December uh, mid to late December about the 19th of December this happened the the car was then stolen and it came as a real shock my girlfriend had gone out in the morning she's going to give my son a lift to school in the Z4 she come back into the house and said for has gone, it's stolen, and this is the first time I've ever had like a car or really anything of high value um, been stolen from us. And I was just shocked. I was like, well, you, it can't be stolen. We, we must have just, you must have parked around the corner. You, you maybe didn't park on the drive. She's on, definitely on the drive, definitely stolen. Um, come as a huge shock. But once the initial shock went away, I thought, well, you know, it's only money, it's only an item, we're safe. You know, no one's been in our house. We tried to look at the positives of it. But the weirdest thing was within a day, I knew the car was coming back. I knew I was going to see the car and find the car. As weird as that sound, within the same day of the car going, I just had this vision in my head, as weird as it sounds, that I'm going to find the car. So what I did, even though the car had been stolen at this point, with the key we still had for the Z4, I carried that everywhere with me. I carried that key everywhere with me. I put it with my, my own car keys, my Rover 75 car keys. I would have the Rover key and clipped onto that would be the Z4. Even though the Z4 was stolen at this time, I carried the key because I, I could visualize in my head seeing the Z4 and needing the key to, to just jump in it and drive off. How it actually turns out when I found the Z4, I didn't jump in it and drive off. Um, I phoned the police and they lifted it for forensics, but I just had this overwhelming, probably one of the strongest senses I've ever had in my life. And that was, we are gonna get this Z4 back. The BMW was stolen in December, 2019. And I'm making this journey in the 11th of January, 2020. So the car's been stolen for about three weeks at this point. I'm driving down this road, 11th of January, 2020, in my Rover 75. This is where I first see my BMW. I look to my right on the opposite side of this dual carriageway. I see a BMW, the same color. It looks to be on the same wheels and is just passing me as I go here. So I immediately hook a U-turn. I'm not 100%, but I have this feeling, this must be the car. This must be the car. So in my diesel Rover 75, I, uh, I drive after it. So I've done the U-turn. I'm driving my car, which at the time was a Rover 75. I'm following the Z4. I'm trying to maintain quite a distance because the old Rover 75 diesel uh, isn't very fast. I mean, the 2.2 Z4 isn't a rocket ship, but it can easily pull away from an old uh, 
diesel rover so i'm trying to keep my distance i phone um, 999 i asked for the police i explained to the call operator police handler look this is a situation a few months ago girlfriend's car was stolen i'm like 99 percent sure I'm, I'm following the same car now um she's not really that helpful kind of doesn't believe me ask well, how do you know it's the car i'm like well i've worked ex exclusively on that car for the last two years i know pretty much every scratch bump detail on it and then there's a scratch on the rear right hand wheel arch and then the front tires prone to going flat i'm looking at the car yeah, the front tires looking a little soft i can see the scratch on the rear wheel arch the soft top where it meets the uh, boot area there's a slight like bit of mold which is really difficult to clean out and i can see that on the car i'm at 99 sure this is the same car it's not really being that helpful and being milton Keynes, every time we move on to a, like a new road I'm trying to update her with now w w what road we're on. Um, I don't know the name of every road in Milton Keynes or the name of like every roundabout, so it's incredibly stressful. The police call handler isn't really that interested in helping, and she does actually just finally tell me, look, uh, for your own safety, you just need to end following your car. Just, just let it go. I'm like, well, you know, thanks for like basically a waste of time. In the end, I follow the car to this like smaller town, like almost like a satellite town in Milton Keynes, which is called Bletchley. The car pulls into a little cul-de-sac. Um, I then just uh, don't follow it into the cul-de-sac as such. I kind of like drop into a little residential parking space, uh, jump out of my car, and I don't know if he knew he was being followed because bear in mind at this time I've probably been following him for you know five ten minutes. I mean, it felt like an eternity, but I'm guessing it's probably like five eight minutes something like that. Uh, I jump out and he's just immediately done like a three point turn in this little cul-de-sac and just driven off. And I run back to my car, but I, I try to find a bit. This is in like a little rat run of back, like small residential tight roads and the car's gone. And I'm just like absolutely gutted. I did think, should I just go into this cul-de-sac like full frontal assault and just like bl block the car in? But the part of me, there was like 1% of me like, what if it's not the car? What if I'm just like blocking this road and i'm like gta in like ripping at the door handle dragging this guy out and um, you, you know I just, it's, it's the real world right it's not gta so that's not what happened um, and i'm just like really annoyed that the cars got away and i thought this was my one chance i knew i was going to see the car again i've seen it and now the, the people that have stolen it or the people they've sold it on to have been spooked and I'm just absolutely gutted but still part of me saying like no we're gonna get the car back we're gonna get in the in like the back of my mind is like no like don't give up we're gonna get it back so the next morning i wake up um basically like first light i'm just essentially waiting for it to get light it's december in the uk it doesn't really get light till like eight in the morning so I'm, I'm up ready to go like half seven i start driving around all the streets of bletchley more like the areas where you just think like a criminal if i was a criminal where would i park a car up uh i'm driving around and that's when I see it. And I turn onto this road. So this is called Cornwall Grove. Turn down here and I'm just scanning everywhere. I'm scanning every little parking space for where the car might be. I drive here. I look over to my left and just behind some hedges, I stop and I see the car. I see the car in this car park here and it's such a surreal feeling. And this is where I found the car, in this car park here. Parked up in this spot with a Coke can. On finding my car in the car park, I phoned 999 again and said, hey look, you know, I phoned you guys yesterday. I was following the car through the streets. I've basically driven around the local area and I found my car parked up in a car park. Um, gave all like the identifying features. I knew it was my car. I ran a number plate check on the cloned plates that they, they had cloned. That come back as a three litre Z4 and mine was a 2.2. Mine had the 2.2 badges on it. I knew all the identifying marks. So the police said, yeah, we'll send someone out. They took what's what actually felt like and probably really was a bit of an eternity they took about 40 minutes to arrive uh, the police officer told me when they got there that they had breakfast at the super sausage cafe which if you know northampton or even milton Keynes, you, you'll probably know of it uh, fairly prominent so they were getting their greasy breakfast up at the uh, super sausage cafe and not a particular rush to uh, get out to a stolen car 
Um, the police said they wanted to lift the car up, uh, lift it up by all, all the wheels onto a low loader because they wanted to preserve the forensics. They wanted to swipe the uh, door handles for fingerprints. They wanted to look inside the car for hairs and DNA that they could possibly link to uh, people that had stolen it, which was a nice idea in theory. The forensics held onto the car for about a month and hadn't processed it for forensic analysis at that point. We knew we wanted to sell the car after being stolen. We didn't we obviously had like a, a negative vibe around it. We didn't want the car after that. So the MOT was kind of ticking down. It only had a few months MOT left. Uh, by this point, I was just sick of the car. I just wanted the, the headache of it gone. Um, so every day it was ticking down, it was closer to the, to the end of its MOT. So we said to the police, look, if you guys aren't gonna do the forensics on it, we just need to get it back. So we need to get this car sold. Um, just sold it fairly cheaply. Uh, just to get it moved on. It's a shame they didn't do the forensics on it because there's quite a lot of stuff in the car we found under the passenger seat was basically like a brand new iPad. Um, we turned it on. It didn't seem like an iPad that you would associate with someone that goes around stealing cars or someone that um, you know fraternizes with someone that goes around stealing cars. It was very corporate. There's almost nothing on it. It was a few pictures and a, like a LinkedIn profile. Uh, we basically managed to work out through the photographs uh, a company that was in the background. We phoned that company up and said, hey, look, do, do you guys use corporate iPads? Because we basically found this iPad, we think it might be one of yours. They said, yeah, yeah, we, we use corporate iPads. Uh, and we managed to uh, reunite this I stolen iPad with its uh, rightful owner, who was a woman, just like normal business type woman who had it stolen from a handbag um, just in the local area only a few weeks before. So she was very happy because it was looking like she was going to have to like pay to get a new iPad or whatever um, from her bosses. So we did a good deed on that. We managed to get that iPad back. There's, there's other like drug paraphernalia and some fairly like heavy duty prescription medications in the car. We just pulled that in a plastic bag and uh, dropped it in at the police station. And, uh, and, and then we got the car um, sold on. Um, another thing that was kind of a big negative that stressed us out at the time as well it looked like the insurance weren't going to pay out so we were really like grateful to have like you know to have found the car and then at least recoup some of our money by selling it on we didn't really lose too much pay like two thousand pounds for that car we owned it two years and then we sold it on for something like twelve hundred pounds something like that so owned it for two years lost like 800 pounds which isn't the car never really needed any maintenance but the insurance weren't going to pay out because my girlfriend was obviously the main driver she drove that car most of the time for work and stuff like that uh, i had my freelander only a few weeks before it was stolen i'd actually scrapped my freelander with the intention of getting this rover 75 and the insurance company were like well your boyfriend's uh, like a named driver on the policy if he's scrapped his freelander that that therefore puts you at a higher risk even though the car was stolen, it wasn't like we... It, right enough, if I was driving that Z4, maybe I crashed into someone, I could sort of see their argument. But when the car's like stolen off the driveway, I think whether my car had been scrapped or I was swapping to a new car, that's just insurance for you. Bunch of scammers, you know, that's just life. A bit disappointing, the police never really took the uh, whole crime that seriously, but that's just the state of the UK. Car crime isn't really... Um, taken that seriously generally and that's just the state of affairs that's just where we are um, in the uk the police eventually caught up with the people that stole our car according to the police they weren't really into stealing cars more than anything they were into robbing houses and according to the police they were quite prolific at robbing houses in the local area so when the police started making arrests and started making charges these criminals were given a plea bargain where they could admit to any and all crimes they'd done over their history and when the courts go for sentencing they're not really going to add any more additional days because uh, it's good for the police because they get a lot of crimes ticked off like unsolved crimes they have on their books just get you know a, a solved crime essentially because if these people just admit to a crime then essentially that's a that's a crime solved it's as a for us it doesn't overly feel like justice is done because our car being stolen almost certainly wouldn't have added any additional days or any additional fine uh, to what these people got. But then in another way, it doesn't really feel like justice, but at least it's an end to, you know, it's closing the book, so to speak. You know, the, the police give you like a, a victim phone call where they phone you up and say, look, these are the names of the people that did it. This is, you know, what they were doing, like robbing houses in the local area. They gave details about 
you know, the events that night of them coming to steal the car, and say they were, they were supposedly robbing a house around the corner. Uh, one said to the other, you know, have you still got the key to that BMW? And that's when they came and stole the car. So, yeah, it's definitely not justice, but it's nice to have like some details and at least, you know, names of the people that did it and what they were really up to. Probably the strangest thing about the whole story is when I was going down that dual carriageway and I saw the Z4 going in the opposite direction, I did the U-turn. That's only about 200 metres away from this house. So where I first saw the car was only about 200 metres away from where the car was stolen, which just seemed like a real um, weird thing to happen. Out of all the places I could have seen it, across Milton Keynes or anywhere else, it was literally 200 metres, probably less than 200 metres um, from where it was stolen. So it just really was um, <laughs> the strangest feeling, whether you want to call it synchronicity or serendipity, whatever you want to call it, it certainly was a strange uh, turn of events. Uh, and we moved on from it now, you know, Cars sold, we've got different cars now on the driveway and cars we're happy with. Um, so overall, it's uh, it's not a happy ending, but you know, it's an ending nonetheless. So thanks for watching this video, guys. Just wanted to share um, just one of the strangest course of events, really, to happen in my life. And um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.